So welcome all viewers uh, to the observation of the World No Tobacco Day campaign. And Cypher is uh, observing it as a month long campaign to aware the tobacco vendors about anti-tobacco laws and tobacco to product waste, which is creating actually havoc within our environment. We are also sensitizing the medical professionals about the importance of ask, advise and refer all their tobacco using patients. All of us, we are stakeholders in tobacco control as it is the most important preventable cause of cities and kills 13.5 lakh persons in India alone. So this is the, these are the photographs of the uh, no tobacco pledge we administered to the IMA members yesterday in the IMA hall. Uh, so I am Dr. Rakesh Gupta, I am President and Director of Public Health Strategic Institute for Public Health Education and Research. And uh, I have with me Dr. Sonu Goel, he is Professor in Department of Community Medicine and School of Public Health, uh, PJ Amiya Chandigarh. And this special edition of Cypher Health News Channel is being released on the occasion of the World No Tobacco Day campaign. We are delighted to have with us uh, Padma Bhushan, Dr. Kebal Krishan Talwar with us. So you're welcome, sir. Thank you so much, Dr. Gupta. So uh, uh, Padma Bhushan, uh, Shri Dr. Uh, Kebal Krishan Talwar is a renowned cardiologist and a former chairman of uh, Medical Council of India. He is a former head Department of Cardiology Ames, New Delhi, and director of Postgraduate Institute of Medical Education and Research, Chandigarh. So before joining PSRI Hospital as a chairman, PSRI uh, Heart Institute, he was chairman cardiology department at Max Super Specialty Hospital, Saket, for six plus years. He also had been an honorary advisor for government of Punjab, health and medical education from 2013 to 2021. He is credited, credited to have performed the first implantation of implantable cardioventer defibrillator that is ICD therapy in South Asia and has been featured in Limca Book of World Record in 1997. He is also credited. Uh, sir, can you go back? So, yeah. He is also credited with introduction of cardiac resynchronization therapy in India and also listed in the Limca Book of World Records. So Dr. Talwar, he is a recipient of the several honors, including Dr. B.C. Roy Award, the highest Indian award in the medical category, and Arya Bhatt Award, Indian National Science Academy. He is a former president of the National Academy of Medical Sciences, NAMS, and a fellow of the Indian National Science Academy. The government of India awarded him the third highest civilian award, the Padma Bhushan in 2006, for his contributions to the medicine. His work on cardiac arrhythmia helped develop it as a specialty in India and develop uh, heart failure and heart transplant programs at Ames, Delhi. His work has been documented by way of several publications, which include 240 articles and uh, 270 abstracts published in various uh, peer-reviewed medical journals. He has also contributed uh, 15 chapters to various medical texts. So, sir, uh, we are uh, highly thankful to you for being with us for this informal interview. So, sir, we'll like to know about your early college and school days. Thank you so much, Dr. Gupta and Dr. Sonu, and for this opportunity. And at first, I also admire you and your organizations for this tobacco control program. I know that when you were in the Punjab government, uh, how sort of passionately you are working on this issue. Uh, congratulations to you again and to your organization. Oh, Agupta, as far as uh, going back to my school days and college days, you see, I belong to a small village in Punjab, that's in Ludhiana district. And we had a school which was still 10th class that time. The school was not uh, rated as that good, but the problem was that that was the only school that one could go. You could not, but I must say we had good teachers that time. Hmm. When I was uh, the science teacher, will call you at home to guide and teach you. We'll hmm. open his lab on Sundays to give, uh, make you do experiments. So that was the, and one more thing, we had a very good physical teacher. 
Okay. This person was a Asian gold medalist from India. He was yeah. belonging to a close by village. Hmm. And every day from four o'clock till late evening, the school ground will be very active. Okay. All games, hockey, cricket, uh, actively. And he used to monitor himself for yeah. two, three hours. And I think that made me too little also get into the hockey team. I even represent and we had a very good team in the school. So what I mean to say that there was a scope to develop both by the, uh, the uh, as far as the school uh, training program and the sports also. Okay. So okay. after that, luckily, I think during our time, there was a board examination for even eight. Yeah. And I got a uh, top position in the district. So I got a scholarship that was a surprise to everyone in the school, to me also, to my family, that okay. there is something like a scholarship also. Okay, that's so then I think, of course, uh, tenth uh, after tenth in our time, we used to have pre university and pre medical. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The parents wanted either you go for engineering or you go for medicine. Mm -hmm. There was a little scope beyond that because yeah. they knew that that is a secure kind of career, and yeah. they were also right. Yeah, there yeah. are limited means, and they wanted KB that him do some course so that he can have a job. Yeah. Anyway, I but for my pre university and pre medical, I went to DB College Alanda. Okay. And that was one of the best colleges that time in Punjab. Yeah. So I did had a good score in the metric, but it was not that good that I could enter into their merit class. Mm -hmm. They will have a merit class of 20 students to whom they used to be a lot of give proper personal attention yeah, yeah. to make them sort of do excel well in the studies. But I think luckily for me, the first three months, uh, the routine exam came in this, the class and I call, and I got good score and so I could enter the merit uh, class. So that two years was a lot of hard work. But at the end of that, I was actually in the first ten in the university after my pre-medical. And uh, so during our time, there was no entrance examinations. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Punjab University was one in the whole Punjab. And so according to the score, you will get admission. So one yeah. was confident to get into the medical college. Oh, yeah. Of course, Patala Medical College was close to my village. So I opted that rather than Amritsar. CMC Ludhiana was also a very good college, more, more I mean, known as Kampur as per the training program. But their fee structure was a little high. So yeah. I want that uh, parents to, I to stress them to pay more money. Anyway, what was your joining year in the Patiala? Because I'm I also joined in Dr. 64. 64, 64 was my batch. So I think there also, then I think good study. But then I, and again, my sports uh, exposure in school helped mm. me. Okay. So I sort of, uh, uh, we had a very good hockey team in the medical college. And there is a intermedical college competition. We also once won that competition. And so I think that was a time for study as well as play. So beyond that, I think uh, I was not that much interested to go around to cinema halls and all that. So I think that period, but then suddenly when I was in the final year, the mm -hmm. PGI was, had already started and one of our seniors had gone to PGI. So I thought I must go to PGI for my further training yeah. and luckily after my graduation I did get a good score but the sports also because PJ had the facility they will give you five extra marks that for your good. sports involvement I had the honor of in hockey from the medical college and then five marks means 150 yeah, because each marks was 30 so yeah. this was added to my final score and I became very high <laughs> so I got into medicine, did my MD, but PGI was then those years were mostly only study, training, study. There was no sports in that okay. now. I mean, everything was concentrated on to the, so did my MD, then cardiology. Then of course, um, after cardiology, there was no vacancy in the department of cardiology. So mm -hmm. I was working in medicine as a faculty for a couple of years. Should I continue production? Okay. So then I, of course, uh, uh, tried to go abroad. But in the meantime, I got a placement in Ames, New Delhi. I joined as a direct, as a assistant professor. That time, lecturer used to be the first position and AP used to be the second position. So okay. I then luck wanted me to, I mean, 
I was very fortunate to enter one of the best department of cardiology in the country that time. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, so I think whatever one has learned in PGI as, as a continuing to heart, but so I think that made me grow. So that was, I think, if you look at the from, but I say that I think luck plays a lot of role. You have to only make your efforts. And of course, uh, they say that hard work always pays. That's yeah. what probably I have learned in my career. Yeah. So thanks for sharing your uh, early experiences in uh, school and college. I'd like to mention one more um, little uh, instance. You see, this was when I was in Ames and I was at a professor in cardiology. Suddenly I got a message one day from that uh, time CM Punjab, Shri Bian Singh Ji. Okay. Shri Bian Singh Ji was uh, from our constituency pile. He was from there. So somebody told him in his office that he was se unka ladka hai, wo yahan pe cardiology mein hai, professor Ames. Mein. So I got a message mila ke Sadar Sahib ne kaha, aap jara mila yaan. I, so I went and met him in Kapoorthala house. That was he was there. So I think, of course, he knew my father from the mm -hmm. village. So then I, he asked me a question. He said, Kaka, that's so ethe aya kime. But I'm trying to say that, that the school background was like that. Yeah. I was surprised at how could I, so I think that's all the... <laughs> right. So I think, uh, sir, it's a very inspiring uh, story of yours. I think more than luck, which you are trying to credit, but it's the hard work and the persistence throughout your life that played a major role in your uh, entire life. I had an opportunity to work under you when you were a director of uh, the institute, uh, PGI, and uh, you were you are still rated as one of the most dynamic director at that point of time. And still now, people remember you as a most dynamic director. So, sir, what are the things which you try to inculcate uh, when you were director of the institute? What was your focus and what do you think a director uh, should do in an institute to uplift that institute? And also tell, you, uh, tell us about, uh, because you are also the honorary advisor for Government of Punjab as well. I mean, uh, you see, when I came to PGI, I must mention that uh, my stay in Ames, New Delhi was very educative. Apart from the clinical, I think there was, we were taught or we learned from our seniors that we have to make effort to excel. And um, so uh, every new thing in cardiology, which will be coming uh, globally, the department, I think each colleague has to, were assigned some areas that do. So I think you learn that I think uh, you have to do your best and you must uh, try to create new things, excel in your field. That's what one has learned. Of course, one also had learned that I think patients are, are I mean, uh, there are distinguished, you can say guests. I mean, we must make sure that do our best to every patient irrespective of what may be his, uh, uh, background, whether he's poor or he's rich. So I think that culture, of course, for the sake of institution, you must also make the special effort to give, uh, kind of um, uh, take care of people who matter to you, who matter in the society, who can bring benefit by their contact and bring benefit to the institution and to the department. So I think I'll just quote one example before I go to PGI. We had a very senior, I mean, her persons admitted in one of our uh, services one time, and our center was a little not getting the right grant, what we should have got. We were given some grant, but the main institution had not given us that uh, benefit. So in the evening when the round was there, the person who was that time head of the planning commission, he was sitting with the patient. So we just started talking about the institute and then mentioned to him this issue. And next day, he gave an extra grant to Cardiac Center. What I'm trying to say that I think it's important and that these were some of the, my learning from AIMS when I entered PGI. PGI, so no, I don't know whether you joined a little late, that time was going through a difficult time, very fast. And uh, <clears throat> the director uh, to whom I, from whom I took over, there was some kind of a, 
uh, going on some kind of action by the government, something in even in the judiciary, he had to go to the court. So these were the environment. So when I went there, it was a very challenging time. Mm. Of course, I was uh, also not, I mean, to be very frank, I, I didn't want to go to PGI. I can tell you with confidence, but the circumstances became like that I couldn't refuse. So anyway, when I joined, I knew I'm, it's a huge task. And during uh, the first six months were very difficult because people, what happens when the environment is not good, Right, good people withdraw. Mm. Those people who are uh, self-interest, they make use of their time and then they try to exploit the system. So when I went, I tried to little address to that issue. Those were little affected. And so they tried to create some issues uh, in the first few months. But I think I was clear that time I told the government, I will go back. Otherwise you do these kind of things. And uh, they, there was no issue, they agreed. And uh, so I think uh, then I had a very good team, I had a very good deputy director, I had a very good financial advisor, I had a very good superintendent engineer. So I think we had a lot of support. And wherever there was some little issue, one took the help of one's colleagues like you. And when you joined, we sent you to emergency. So that was the major. Uh, so I think that was the way institution has its strength. You have a faculty who are very dedicated and apart from their uh, professional activities, if you involve them in some other area, they happily do it. Right. So I think that was these, these challenges when luckily the few challenges when I was there, which I thought one was the new center. All these centers which were done, they were started earlier, but because of some irregularities, all these were standing stake. I mean, it was not going, a lot of problem, financial right. issue, money issue. There were very few ICUs. There are ventilator issues. People will come and say, so when I used to go to the emergency of MBUVAX, a heart say patient ke log, it was very painful. I, I had not seen this kind of thing in AIMS. Right. And then uh, technology, we didn't have a pet, we didn't have gamma knife. I mean, in institution, not good MRI. So these were some of the challenges. So you have to address to the infrastructure. You have to interest, uh, address to the faculty interest to motivate them, to make them sure that they you get the best out of them. Right. So, so I think all these, we all worked together. And I had, I must say, it was all a, a combined uh, activity by the faculty, administration, that we could bring all back, these centers start functioning, we could build them, and uh, we could try to build up a different uh, department, add to them infrastructure, what was needed. And uh, two things I'll mention to you, just for the sake that uh, it's important, I'm sure you as a one of the administrators, we had a lot of difficulty in emergency. Right, you know that uh, people, I was surprised one day that if somebody has to massage a patient, First, the relative has to get the uh, gloves from the shop before we, they are resident. So I think we said it's sad. We calculated it was around 12 lakh rupees expenditure per month if we give 24 hours free. I said, this is no money. And so we initiated that. We even try to have a donations. And I think a lot of donations poured in. I'm sure probably you may be knowing that time. So that was one that uh, I think if you find a problem, I mean, there are solutions. Sometimes solutions are not easy, but mm. you have to work for a solution. Right. I say, there's no way that you say, be a difficulty, but kuch na kuch to, you may not be 100% uh, successful. Another thing, so you know, what was happening in the wards when the patients are discharged, you see their bills are made. I came to know that in, during the billing, some of the investigations were tore off. So they were not added to the bill. Mm -hmm. And that was a connivance from all kind of uh, thing. I mean, so we thought ke, to bypass this, what we did, we say we'll charge every day 500 rupees from a patient in the ward, all investigation free. Mm -hmm. Except radiology, like if you have a MRI, if a CT scan, that is extra. Right. X-ray or ECG or blood test, 
So if you are seven days, you pay three thousand five hundred. With this only, I mean, so nobody could complain. We are not charging more. Right, right. And those people who were free, of course, they were zero. They won't right. have to pay anything. Right. And so with this, uh, that time when we initiated this, our uh, sort of the generation of fund from this kind of money which was coming, one crore suddenly increased. Oh, that's great. I mean, that was not much money, but question is, you have to find ways. Yeah. And then uh, we also there was one more challenge which I think um, all of us uh, realize that if you do um, if you the hospital has a lot of expenditures a white elephant so government cannot fund for everything we thought we must charge for every investigation and uh, so we made that we will have these kind of charges people will have to pay right. now. The noise was raised by some of the politicians. The PJ is so private, or it's going on. I have to tell the insured body. I said those who are free, they get free. But those who can pay, if they pay three thousand outside for investigation and pay only less than one thousand here, they will be very happy to pay. Mm. Like uh, for example, a big example was gamma knife. Gamma knife costs about. Uh, I think eighty thousand plus or one lakh. But if you have a poor free, you don't pay a single penny. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't have a gamma knife, person who is rich can go out and get it done right. for him, no problem. But the person who is poor, he has no access to it. Mm -hmm. so this was a kind of cross subsidy. I had to explain to our ancient body that right. we are not again. We are helping the community. So what I mean to say, you have to think these ways. Make sure right. that. Uh, I hope no, sir. I think uh, yes. So I think a lot of because I still remember uh, during your tenure, lot of new centers have started, lot of new procedures have started, and even there were lot of overall in the emergency and new emergency block was started at that point of time. And uh, you believe in your juniors. This is what I uh, I had experienced that you believe in the younger staff. And I joined uh, immediately after my joining as assistant professor. So I was posted in emergency and then made purchase officer and lot many other responsibility you shouldered and I really relish that and make use of that and we wrote a uh, book uh, which is now very well known uh, on hospital administration. So, sir, I think a lot of things I, I have learned from you from uh, all these uh, initiative which was done by you during that time. Dr. Uh, sir, uh, sir, recently there was uh, an article from your side. It was medical profession deserves dignity and fair play. So, will you uh, like to let us know what uh, what are your views about that that issue? You see, Dr. Gupta, if you, I mean, frankly, as a professional for so many years now, yeah. one thing which pains me, frankly, the most is that the medical profession today is not attracting the bright youngsters. Yeah. You must have seen in your time, in my time. The medicine was the most sought-after career. The bright students will come to this profession, and I will say this profession, every profession, I will say, but this profession particularly needs bright minds, because you are looking after the uh, patients, you are looking after the human people, so you can't make uh, that kind of mistakes. What has happened over the period of time? Many things have happened. To some, I think maybe we professional are to blame also. But certain things have happened. This has affected uh, the kind of uh, attraction to this career. It's a long career. It's a hard career. And so, if you don't bring some attraction to that, younger people don't come. And that's what probably. And this um, now recent uh, article that I wrote, I, I I'm sort of I got your message. Out. You see what happened in Rajasthan. This was a very very sad and serious thing. Yeah. There have been few examples before also. The question is, I'll say, since these kind of uh, uh, CPA, that medical services have been brought under Consumer Protection Act, this is some of the other uh, made people feel, particularly wrong people. Still, patients are very good. They're very respectful to you. But some people feel that, OK, uh, there is some complication which may be even natural. They think it's a uh, wrong. And they are trying to approach these. You have these legal people coming in. You have and these CPA codes. To very frank, sorry to say, 
many of them do not have the uh, expert available to them to give the right kind of uh, that what has been done yeah. now so i have been a little more concerned about it and i came across the judgment one which i quoted in this and uh, that was a case from dunyana only and see the justice lahotia he gave such a solid judgment he mentioned all these issues if we also say medicine is a science of uncertainty uh, and so you can't say that every patient that you treat you remember you may be seeing your own career yeah. even sometime a dental obstruction can have a problem yeah definitely any kind of procedure can have problem mm-hmm. these are you can't have any 100% surety so these kind of issues have made this i mean that this profession as a kind of a people trying to approach these court people are doc violence again the professionals so how do you expect people to deliver their best with these all kind of stress and strains yeah. and this also i see one of the major reason by bright youngsters as kya karna hai hum engineer banenge mba kar lete hain itna paisa kamayenge you hear keep on slogging by the time you do your specialty super specialty you are mid 30s and then you are also looking for jobs so it's a, but it's a career which required devotion yeah. but if you people don't realize people not respect you why you people will come so that my pain and i think i am quite um, uh, hopeful that i think this should be looked i have been even motivating the national medical council now to look at it you make sure that people who do wrong thing they are penalized yeah. no professional for wrong thing should be protected but don't uh, jump them I mean, and i think you must be remembering that satyameev jayate seen when yeah. i was in the mci so i was called so first i thought why to go but then somebody told me if you don't go they will be more criticizing you so anyway i only meant that everybody is not same i know the wrong things are happening but there are large number of good people yeah. so but i mean see this is one issue of the and i think uh, this uh, my personal feeling is since the cpa has started there has been uh, uh, issues and uh, mushrooming of litigations against medical professionals even if you do right thing you are always now you if you are worried how will you do a procedure so i think these are the concern and i feel society should realize i don't say that uh, if any professional is doing a wrong thing that he should not be penalized Yeah. but the system should be there to identify and not that can you scare everybody that people sort of uh, so these are issues uh, let us see how things go and uh, one is trying to work on it more on this issue yeah. you are you are right sir i think uh, your uh, article was triggered by that unfortunate suicide by a rajasthan yeah. doctor gynecologist yeah, yeah. and i must uh, i may tell you that uh, i am an ophthalmologist but once we were operating in an eye camp and one of my colleague he did uh, give retrobulbar injection and the patient um, he, uh, she was in shock so luckily for us uh, an, an anesthetist was available and she was revived but uh, anything can happen in science uh, in so they could be all take precaution but the sense of medicine is science of uncertainty uh, and um, uh, in looking this is any problem now postpartum hemorrhage is a known complication uh, Yeah, yeah yeah so you can't say that and that uh, uh, putting a criminal of a yes. kind of uh, the, uh, such a serious kind of under a rule that uh, somebody has killed I mean, these are very sad oh, yeah. parts yeah, see right. there is one more example i like to share with you on this uh, dr desai used to be the founder of tata cancer center in bombay one of the very renowned surgeon after his retirement he was working in a hospital and some vip patients uh, relation was down with a advanced cancer mm-hmm. so one of his junior said ke ke we he had gone abroad they also said no so one of the junior probably said ke we can open and see we can do something so that uh, prof- uh, he opened up and then he rang him up ke sir ye hai he said ke koi fayda nahi close kar do mm-hmm. and this vip went to the court counsel this was in 96 or 7 and uh, he was uh, judgment against dr sai was passed by the local courts the numer courts 
and finally supreme court has to give the right he said nothing he has done but look at around uh, for a person of his stature yeah who has spent his life in building up institutions that even he has to go through mm. and finally relief came from supreme court so what i mean is those 10 12 years you tell me any professional who is small growing in his career this kind of things come what will he do so we need to we need to make sure that he takes due precaution everything is done in the right manner evidence based manner but at the same time the system must protect the person should not right. be that so that's one issue which i think let us hope that i think this profession is at cross road and i feel that uh, these uh, two wrong things which are there if we can take care i'm sure we can attract our bright youngster back to this street right right sir. so sir uh, uh, sir i think uh, going back uh, to the profession which you are telling that uh, right now the young minds and the bright minds previously they want to uh, passionately follow this but now they are not coming so there are various factors which play role in attraction of this and similarly there are uh, various factors which play role in retention in rural uh, rural areas the doctors uh, in rural area that they, they don't uh, there are many reasons why they don't want to work despite being devoted devoted to the public so uh, so do you think that uh, what can be done by the government still people uh, don't want to work our doctor colleagues uh, do they don't get the facilities over there or uh, they don't get the right uh, environment in the rural facilities you see you're right but at the same time see i think what you must the government must make sure that you create attractiveness to go there right during my medical concert term for two years we did made a uh, something decision which was notified that let everybody spend one year in village attach him to a medical college give him good amount of salary good him a laptop and uh, some mentor but then after one year he has to be confident that he will get into post graduation the reason being today undergraduate alone has lost its value in the society for to be a really medical professional you have to be post graduate so i'll say that today we must make sure number one that the pg seats number is as number is same as ug or maybe still more and then uh, depending on the person performance he may get the specialty but there should be confidence that you will get into field so this one year mechanism can be made that you make sure but then don't make exception that so and so belongs to so many this person he won't be sent to the remote village only a poor man's uh, son will be sent no such a kind of excuse everybody some mechanism methodology which is for everybody same i think so no is not difficult but only thing is that make sure there no bias is done every student will accept but suppose you say so and so belong to this family he won't go to village he will post it there and only that so this how we miss these kind of uh, the season things so i feel that uh, there should be some kind of way but we must make post graduate sees number as undergraduate but at the same time i will also so no say we should not compromise with the quality of training right by right. opening more colleges please for god sake don't dilute quality good doctors are a asset to the nation you look at it before 94 you look before these private colleges started whatever people have passed whether they have stayed in the country or have gone abroad they have brought a good name to the society to the country people working outside people respect indian doctors they are more compassionate they are more approachable so we learn all this so i think we sort of um, uh, make sure that we don't dilute quality we bring good culture good teachers so i think number right. graduation should not be very quickly that we dilute our standard of mm-hmm. training program. right sir right sir and what about sir uh, the recently introduced uh, uh, this public health act uh, or uh, the public health management cadder public health cadder which uh, recently government has introduced sir what is the views on it sir you see uh, but so no it should be there i mean in punjab this covid time 
I had to Rajesh was with me. We created positions. We filled people. I said they are the people who should be now. And so that's why I mean this crisis taught the uh, Punjab. We I think recruited that time uh, many of the community medicine experts yes, in the yes. system. I agree. We should have a public health sector because that is the one ranting element is uh, has a huge opportunities. But somebody who is trained, he can only do it. I mean, if you have one person in districts, what will he do? I mean, mm -hmm. you are only, I mean, making him not to do anything. I mean, so you have to have, no, I strongly support this. I think Tamil Nadu probably had done That's earlier. Right. So I was actually motivating the government of Punjab during this crisis, but did make new positions. So, but I agree with you that this is the one, I think very good decision that the government has taken and should be, I think, implemented all over the states. And we must have the right people in the right place. Right, sir. Right, sir. Right, sir. Dr. Rakesh? Yeah, so since you know that uh, this is the World No Tobe, uh, Tobacco Day campaign month, so we'd we'll like to know what are your views about the World No Tobacco Day and what is your message to the public and to medical professionals especially, how this epidemic should be dealt with? Gupta, you have been, uh, we have played a very significant role in this before you, I mean, I really, I only feel that I think is, we all know smoking or tobacco as a serious risk factor, not only for the heart disease as a cardiologist, we know. I have always thought in my career that uh, each thing may have a, some good and some bad thing. Yeah. But in tobacco, I could not find that it does anything good to the body. Yeah, yeah. right, sir. So when we talk of alcohol, we'll still say that those people take a small drink, maybe only 30 cc or 40 cc, it may be a tranquilizer. Yeah. Actually, I remember a patient uh, way back in early 70s. One of our senior doctor from a medical college told him, a white compost, you can take this small drink, <laughs> but limit to 130 cc, don't go beyond it. Yeah. So he said it's a good drink. But I mean, no, see, I'm not advocating alcohol. Rather, I will like to say on that issue also in your um, uh, this session today. But I think tobacco, I hope some way, because this is only thing, Probably what I feel that maybe the system has to find some ways, those who are cultivating tobacco, that how they have to motivate it to sort of do something else so that uh, they are uh, uh, sort of financially they are not uh, affected. So that is, but, but otherwise, uh, I think tobacco uh, has all the bad things that we sort of see. And so I have... congratulate you that you have been a very, from the state, you has been the forefront of this uh, particular prevention program. Yes, yeah, so we, we try to do, I mean, a lot for this uh, tobacco control. So what is your message for the uh, medical professionals? How, how the tobacco patient should be tackled with? Well, I think uh, probably number one, educating the society. Number two, I think the worst age they say when the children can get into these kind of thing, whether it is tobacco, whether it's alcohol, or even drugs, it's like age from 15 to 21. Yeah, sure. And that is a time when they are either in the high schools or in the colleges. Oh, sure. So we must make some very strong educational activity program in the schools and colleges to educate them. What are the harmful effects? The problem with the smoking also came from the movies. When we were younger, I mean, this was a style, the heroes will smoke like that and this, everyone right. will try to follow them. Right. So I think we need to also educate them that it transcends society. So all these kind of things should also be some way handled. I'm sure now people are realize it and those things are not happening, but in my time, in the movies, how do you smoke? How sort of you create those, those kind of uh, and all that. And access to not only cigarette, but access to even alcohol. This age group may government to realize that the shops and the shops are in the vicinity may not be able to people who earn, sell it, they earn it, but, they, but this is an age group. I'm sure you may be uh, sort of uh, more knowledgeable on this, but this is the age group which we need to protect. 
if some children are beyond 21 22 then very little chances they will get into chronic smoking or they will get into alcohol use kind of so right, we need sir. to concentrate on that age group and with all means yes right. right sir we are actually now working on that tobacco vendors licensing it should be made compulsory and uh, dr sone is also working on that uh, tobacco free generation concept good good you have the right person with you yeah, yeah. <laughs> and sir for doctors actually we have started a campaign that they should ask brief at the abc this is ask brief advice and cessation support to all their patients so we are giving uh, this message to the doctors we have started a social media campaign Good. and uh, hopefully uh, people will i mean the medical profession will be more sensitized to the issue sir yeah, i think that's very vital particularly young girls sometime now you find that ladkiyan smoking mein ja rahi hain matlab jo ke to gina jata tha ki no this is uh, but some of the other we have to educate everyone and from right from the schools i'll say 8th 9th class ke baad till early college days there should be some aggressive kind of a communication there the harmful effect of these things and kind of it right sir so i think uh, uh, sir this message will go long uh, from a cardiologist or an eminent cardiologist and administrator that uh, tobacco use and alcohol both are very harmful for our health and we should shun this and uh, we are now working on tobacco end game sir uh, or tobacco regeneration so that uh, our future generation may not uh, see the tobacco in the shops so yes, the long term plan which uh, we are working on sir I and think uh, it's, yeah. wish you all the best sonu on this this is a very this is a very important uh, thing i think particularly our young generation right so sir. i think uh, we can have a bright nation only after then we have a young people who grow as good citizens right sir right sir right sir so sir we are actually um, uh, like after listening to this interview and having a talk after so many years after uh, from you so it was really a pleasure talking to you and uh, and i think your commitment your commitment to patients your commitment to uh, the institute where you worked to nation i think uh, it will incite and it will motivate our youngsters uh to work even harder and doctors to even perform better sir uh, thank you so much dr sonu but i think just if you permit me one small yes, thing sir. i would like to share or mention yes, sir. Yes, that sir. Uh, as profession we should also look at the family plan mm. and i think there should be that some measures have to be done to control population by all segments i want right. that i it should be so all um, irrespective of the region is irrespective of the religion is irrespective of the caste i think that is one thing for a healthy nation we are all working right. for a healthy nation i think i hope the government whether you bring some kind of a, a universal law or some civil whatever it is but i think they need to now address to that also right. uh, because that will give a, a more future to our nation no surely sir i think they need that and i think uh, the doctors who are working day and night need that family support and commitment uh, to work even harder so uh, sir you are right and thank you very much for being here and it okay. was very pleasure to talk to you uh, thank you thank you very much sir thank you so much dr sonu dr gupta for this opportunity and i think uh, you both are doing a great things and uh, uh, sir wish you all the best also for all your efforts thank you thank you very much sir thank you and uh... hello and welcome to the health minute highlights A study has shown that vaccinated individuals with breakthrough SARS-CoV-2 infection exhibited a higher risk of death and developing long COVID including cardiovascular, kidney, neurologic and musculoskeletal disorders compared to the vaccinated individuals with no SARS-CoV-2 infection. However, the risk of developing long COVID was found to be 15% lower in vaccinated individuals than the unvaccinated individuals. Researchers have successfully employed deep learning for individuals with ischemic heart disease to assess scarring in the heart and predict the risk of arrhythmia related sudden cardiac death. This is a major improvement over existing implantable cardioverter devices that capture only 20% of such deaths. According to a study, alcohol consumption is associated with the development of heart failure and the safe intake level of alcohol varies for Asian and European populations. The study concluded that drinking more than 70 grams of alcohol per week poses a risk to cardiac health. in the european population while those with cardiac conditions were at a 4 to 5 times higher risk of heart failure with moderate to high intake of alcohol a 
According to a recent study, inhibition of matrix metalloproteases MMP9 and 12 can protect against spinal cord injury-induced sensory and locomotor deficits by reducing injury-induced edema, pro-inflammatory pain markers, pain sensation, and blood spinal cord barrier breakdown in mouse and rat models. These promising findings have led to the initiation of a phase 2A clinical trial in humans. Do you think anti-inflammatory treatment will be an effective way to preserve the sensory and locomotor functions in patients with spinal cord injury? Let us know your thoughts by commenting below. Health Minute, the most liked segment of Doc brings you the latest happenings in the medical field. Stay tuned for more insights. Happy Doc Flexing!